gravitational waves so sir please tell us about gravitational waves and uh, in 2017 uh, three uh, physicists got the nobel prize for uh, this topic so please tell us about uh, gravitational waves and the ligo india project that you are a part of please tell us about it. okay so gravitational waves uh, just like you know you know that uh, we have electric charges and you know you have electromagnetic waves so if i charge a ruler uh, you know on your sleeve and move it around moving charges will create uh, you know electromagnetic waves so if the charges are accelerated uh, so when you see an antenna what's happening is you know currents are moving back and forth so that so uh, what is amazing again fundamentally about um, gravitation waves is what we had before einstein's gravity was newton's gravity and newtonian gravity had no space for a traveling wave okay so in technical terms uh, every interaction we know of has something called a uh, radiative mode you know the way it can propagate and interact einstein's gravity provide uh, gravitation provided that and einstein in fact uh, a year after he uh, put his theory of einstein's gravitation called general relativity uh, he also predicted that um, the existence of gravitational waves and he made an estimate and he has in his paper some statement um, which of course it's in the german uh, but you know rainer weiss uh, uh, kind of translated part of that in stock so he basically said it's not going to be of any importance because it's very tiny the effect is very tiny even if you take stars moving around but in those times you did not know that there were compact stars and compact stars correlation so there are phenomena in the universe where the strength is of the gravitation waves generated is higher but even then it poses a big technical challenge so with the best apparatus we have um, which is something like uh, interferometer michelson interferometer for people who are aware of it uh, you're looking at difference of uh, light travel time between two arms which are getting squeezed or stretched as the gravitation wave goes through right and that squeezing is at the level of uh, you know one part in 10 to a 90 so i keep using these big numbers but you know it will be atometers right what what is technically called atometers okay now if you want to look at two mirrors which are just moving around by that much you know all that requires uh, you know first of all and the larger the baseline the more the mirrors move in a gravitation wave but 4 kilometers is what uh, looked optimal then then you have to have laser lights bouncing back and forth and you have to detect this tiny fluctuations right and this was set up uh, you know as i said renovate said the vision to say that you can take lab lab size interferometers and scale it up to 4 kilometers and still make them work and you know the ligo project has took four decades to set it up and you know detect it uh we got into the game in 2007 or uh, when you know one of the young uh, researchers uh, rana dikari was visiting me at ayuka pune uh, there was this was a gravitation and cosmology meeting so there were many others so when we discussed about the possible possibility of starting this experimental activity in india i could bring together a few people and discuss it and then in a couple of years we set up a consortium of uh, you know uh, scientists in you know interested in this as well as people technical people i mean experimental physicists who are capable of you know understanding and setting up such such a detector and that's the story i mean so in 2011 we had this opportunity to uh, set up uh, you know, propose the like we did project and uh, we are on the way i mean we are in construction uh, so that is the story now why gravitation waves are important i told you it's a unique prediction beyond newton's gravity i mean you can't just 
you know, improve on Newton's gravity and get the general relativity effects. Whereas um, gravitation, you know, gravitational waves you can't get out of that. So that's unique. It also, the fact that it is showing you that gravitation has radiative modes is a pointer to the fact when you do quantize any interaction, it's these radiative modes that you're quantizing, right? So that it's a field theory, right? And so it gives you a further impetus to say there must exist uh, something very similar to, you know, that like we understand electromagnetic waves having photons, there must be something similar in gravitation. Unless gravitation is, a, you know, we discover is totally different. And there are people who also think of that, but, you know. Uh, so here's the, where, here's uh, where the gravitons came from. Yeah. Particle of gravity. Particle of gravity. But the question is, if we uh, take the path we took for electromagnetic, uh, you know, interactions, that's called quantum electrodynamics, you know, uh, that path for gravitation as the Einstein's gravity breaks down. I mean, we can't use the same tricks that we use uh, to get it. So people have stepped back and looked at, you know, whether we are quantizing the right objects. So there are very interesting programs. Of course, um, there's uh, something called loop quantum gravity, which works in normal three spatial and one time dimensions and, you know, has objects that it quantizes, which are, um, which are different from, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, if the basis is different, normally, you know, the, in quantum mechanics, you quantize uh, a pair of objects, right? So here, these objects that you quantize are somewhat different from this thing. And that has led to a view of what quantum gravity may be looking like. Then there are other approaches which look at the causal structure of space time and try to look at atoms of that, with something called causal set theory. These are all within you know, the three and one dimensions. There's another offshoot that is very uh, you know, well established, is pushing along the particle theory aspect and the question is at some point you realize that possibly thinking of particles as point object itself is misplaced and you think of them like uh, stringy objects like one dimensional strings but the strings the scale is again you know very small you know 10 to a minus 30 kilometers but okay so you don't see that stringy character but that's called a string theories approach to uh, there, the general relativity would appear as a low energy approximation. It's not quantizing general relativity, but it is, you know, propounding a fundamental picture of how uh, particles and emerge, right? And then that theory is quantizable, but on the other hand, uh, to connect it to real real things. First of all, it works only in if you have extra dimensions. So you have to have, you know, additional uh, six dimensions to make it work. Mm -hmm.